Today, I am going to be demoing our CRD software, which is a report automation tool for Crystal Reports. Currently, what you are looking at is the home screen of the CRD software, and you will notice I have a few schedules already created in these folders. What I'd like to do is start out by going through the options. All of these options are configuration settings that are saved um, in a configuration file locally on the machine. So under the general options, this is where you're going to have some of your basic uh, default settings. And starting out with the customer number, once you have purchased the software and activate, your customer number will appear here. We do have the ability to refresh the desktop, uh, which is this information here. When, as you have schedules going, if uh, it will pull the latest results. Only convert remote paths to UNC. This is if you are using um, a disk destination, for example. It will automatically convert any mapped drives to a full UNC path. You do have a process watcher. Should you want to manually execute a schedule, uh, you will be able to see the status of the execution of that report. And then, of course, you've got the relative time, uh, which is the uh, machine time of where the software is installed. Under the error handling section, any reports, any failures uh, in CRD, you will have the ability to set up uh, either an email notification or text message. So in this case, I've got an email address. So any reports that fail, any errors that come out of the CRD software will be emailed uh, to the account listed here. We do have uh, error messages if you are opened in the software and an error is popped up. You have the ability to automatically close those messages after a certain period of seconds. Under the miscellaneous, uh, we have an option um, that will allow you to uh, determine if you want your record selection formula in your crystal report to automatically update when you are refreshing a schedule. So if you are refreshing a schedule, you are pulling in the most current crystal report, the RPT file itself, and there are some times where the record selection formula may or may not be modified when you are setting it up within our software, so you have that ability to, to determine should you want to refresh it. Enable pre-caching of reports. So you'll notice here speeds up single schedules with multiple destinations, and you do have a little pop-up in yellow that provides a little bit more detail for you as far as if it is switched off, what will happen, um, and so forth. Sync user defaults across all clients. This gives you the ability, if you have multiple installations that are connected together, to sync the user defaults across all of the uh, other machines as well. Load folders in the main UI on demand. So this is the main screen here, the user interface. When the software does load, should this automatically populate and load all of the folders. Show recent outputs in the main UI. Again, this is the outputs that you are provided here. Under this info screen, you do have a daily set of outputs uh, to determine what your peak usage is. You have the system verbose logging by default that is enabled. This is more so for technical support um, and development to be able to uh, grab additional log files that may be created when schedules are uh, running and executing. So if you happen to have any issues, need technical support, there are log files that have been uh, added in um, in the Christian Stephen folder. And that, again, is provided to support uh, so that they can review and determine and resolve any issues or questions that you may have. Show insert screen where appropriate. So there is an insert screen that we will use to create or grab dynamic date values. You can also use these within the parameters of a crystal report. So I'll show you this screen as an example when we go through creating a schedule. 
automatically check for updates. So we do update the software uh, often. It will automatically check anytime the software is opened for any latest updates. And at that point, you'll have the ability to determine if you want to go ahead and download and install the latest update or hold off. Then we've got the use the alternative slower method for previewing reports. So this is something that our developers came up with as an alternative uh, with the Crystal Reports uh, version Crystal uh, 11, not 2011. So this may be called the Crystal XI. The previewing ability was broken and has not been resolved. So our developers came up with an alternative workaround so that you can, any user still using Crystal Reports XI will still have the ability to preview reports. Then we have a couple of PDF rendering engine options. So I'm um, using native PDF rendering engine, which is our CRD native PDF, uh, but we do have the ability, uh, should you have special characters and need a um, Cute PDF, for example, that have non-Latin fonts. And then this newer option that was in the latest release to force larger fonts for PDF when using a native PDF rendering. So only when you are using this option, you can enable this to ensure that the font sizes uh, correlate and match. So that is pretty much under the general option. Moving on to messaging, this is the SMTP or mail server settings. We do have MAPI, SMTP, uh, and a couple of legacy email options here. SMTP we have found is uh, the most popular, and Office 365 does have default settings that you can grab off of Google. Uh, we do use Office 365, and as you can see here, I've got the account information set up. And with the SMTP security, uh, TLS typically, sometimes SSL um, may be required on your end for your mail server. So our software will use your mail server to send and generate reports. Any security settings that are set will also um, apply because you are, again, just integrating your mail server connection to be able to allow CRD to send out the reports to your internal, external clients and employees. Moving on to the scheduler, um, as you can see, I currently have mine set to no scheduling required, which means no reports will go out. We do have background scheduling. With background scheduling, what that means is a user must be logged into that machine in order to run reports at any given time. If a machine is turned off in the middle of the night or there's a power surge and it is rebooted, the reports will not go out until someone logs into that machine. So we do nowadays recommend using the NT service. So this will be a domain account, typically a local admin on that account, uh, that you will enter in uh, the credentials for. This will run as a service on the background, so you can um, you don't necessarily need a user to be logged into the machine uh, to run those reports. If the machine does have a power outage or is rebooted in the middle of the night, as soon as that machine is kicked back on, the services will pick up and any schedules that were supposed to run will automatically kick off and continue running. We do have a backup option uh, to use if it is a backup scheduler or a failover. So if you are using a collaboration type mode with multiple installations, you can have a, a backup should the main scheduler fail for any reason. Under polling intervals, this is how often the scheduler will poll for schedules. Um, we have standard, which is all schedule types listed here minus the event-based. With the event-based, um, we do have it separate polling, and you can change these as normal. Typically, the 30 seconds um, is su sufficient. We do have this additional option as well to pre-check database conditions using up to a certain number of threads. This is specific to event-based scheduling because event-based is a triggering of a report based on a condition. You can pre-check that uh, condition and use additional threads before the schedule actually attempts to execute. Under multi-threading, this gives you the ability, if enabled, to run 
multiple reports simultaneously. Uh, in our example here, I can set this up, you know, to 10. If I've got 10 reports, that must absolutely start executing at 5 a.m. every day so that they're finished by a certain period of time. You can enable this to allow those reports to run simultaneously. Does this mean they're going to run faster? Not necessarily. Um, you want to ensure that the machine that you have CRD on has enough resources to be able to handle this type of a load. Uh, so I do recommend always starting out a bit lower and working your way up and checking the CPU, the memory um, on that machine to see if you need to bump that up a little bit more. Under miscellaneous, we have the do not check and restart the scheduler on editor startup. This is typically used if you're using background scheduling. So when a user is logged in, those reports are running under that account. Let's say another user logs in as well. You do not want another scheduler starting up under that, on, under that user's account. So you want to ensure to have this enabled should you be using background scheduling. You also have the ability to delay the scheduler from starting once someone is logged in or um, on the NT service, it is automatic, so it is always running. So this as well applies to just background scheduling. The last option is the blackout times for the scheduler. So when should the scheduler not run? When should it stop? Uh, typically, this would be used uh, when you have your databases being backed up. So if the CRD database is in the process of being backed up with SQL Server, you will want to ensure that you don't have schedules going out during that time because they will fail if they need to connect to that database. So uh, maybe 12 a.m. to 2 a.m. if your databases are being backed up around that time, you could use as an example to, uh, to stop the scheduler. Moving on, under housekeeping, uh, we do have what we call folder housekeeping, where you can select a path to have cleared out any files or folders that may be in that this location that you've specified. So you'll notice here you can specify how many days, hours, minutes, months, weeks should the CRD software go in and clean up and remove any files or folders that are older than that certain period of time that you've selected. This does not have to be CRD folders. This could be your own user account temp folder that you've created. So any path or location um, that the machine has access to, you can use this for. Under user defaults, these are email setting defaults. So if you're using pretty much the same email subject and body for the most part for your email destinations, you can set the uh, default settings here as well as your default database login credentials. Nowadays, most of the crystal reports and schedules uh, that you will use may require you to um, enter in credentials in order to run that report. You can set this information if you have one database and credentials that you use for most of your reports. You can definitely go ahead and set that here, and that way, it'll save you time as you're creating schedules. Under miscellaneous, this is the default report location. So whenever you're going to grab your crystal report or the RPT file, what should the browser automatically pull open to? Moving on to the default destinations. Uh, what you'll notice here, we have email, disk, fax, Slack, Dropbox, Google Drive, and Google Sheets, SharePoint, FTP, printer, and ODBC connection, as well as text messaging as email, uh, as destinations that you can use. Default destinations here are just pre-set up destinations that I've already created. Um, so if I go and edit one of these here, um, what you will find is I've already got my FTP connection to my FTP server already listed. So if I use FTP as a destination quite often, I don't want to have to enter in the server info and credentials every single time. So I've set it up once and I can now just simply import and use this already created destination. Under the system tab, we do have um, a few folder structures 
that either temporary files or uh, depending on your scheduling is set up, you know, if you enable snapshots, where will that information be saved? We do have the default settings listed here, including our own uh, temporary output folder, uh, which is automatically set to clear out and remove any files that are older than seven days. We do have these uh, email setting, um, so any EML files that are saved, if you're sending out emails, uh, they will be saved here in a, EML, a .eml file format. Here is a few additional settings um, for Excel output. Um, you'll notice that it applies only to the Excel data only options, but you can specify your default column width, um, areas, you're maintaining uh, column alignment, showing grid lines, all of that for Excel can be uh, predefined and set up here. You do have an option to validate report login information before exporting. Now this may increase the time it takes to ex execute the report and that is because it is going to first attempt to validate the report before it goes and runs the report. And then lastly, the enable TLS 1.2, so security, well we do know TLS 1.0 is going away. Um, and we have that option here if you are already using the TLS 1.2 to have that enabled. Moving on to the next option is the audit trail. So I can enable this option if you have multiple users using CRD. You can track uh, what they are doing within the software. So what user is creating schedules, who deleted a schedule, uh, maybe um, changed or modified a schedule. I, all you would do is connect to a 32-bit ODBC connection to where you want that data stored. We do have a list of what I call custom tasks or workflows. These custom tasks are available in any of these scheduling types that you use and can be used alongside um, the schedule or completely on its own. And I'll show you how you can do that um, when we get into the scheduling. So we've got uh, going through this run program open document. So you could use this to run a batch file or a command prompt. Uh, what you'll see here is you're just selecting the executable and then you'll have a few additional options if there's um, parameters that you would like to set or maybe it needs to run under a certain domain account. You can specify that here. We do have a print document um, and a wait pause executing another schedule. So if you need one report to run, then after that report is ran, you need a different one to run. You can use these um, execute schedule and then select the schedule that you want to execute immediately after. Now, I wanna go back to the wait pause. Why would you use something like a wait pause? Let's say I am using one of our database custom tasks, more specifically executing a SQL script. So I have one already set up here where I am connecting and I've got my uh, SQL query, which is an insert query. So it's going to insert some data into a database. Before I go and run the report, I may want that to finish running. So I may want it to wait, you know, it takes probably 15 seconds or so I want to put 20 seconds and then I can go in and say now execute this report. So you can do certain things like that. Now let me go ahead and hit execute here to save that. Um, sending a text messages, maybe you want to add an appointment to your calendar. Under our files and folder options, we do have the copy file, uh, rename or moving a file, deleting, writing a text file merging and manipulating PDFs. So all of these options, if I just click and drag, you'll see here I can merge multiple files and folders and all I'm going to do is select what um, file that I'd like to merge if I have any, which I do there. Um, and you can also merge all files in a single folder. Just select your folder location. Where do you want that merged PDF going to? 
as well as should it replace any existing files in that location. So you do have some additional options. You'll notice here you can also password protect those PDFs as well. Moving on, uh, sending an email, if this is outside of sending a report, maybe an email notification you want to send where it's not necessarily a report. We've got that custom task, um, uploading, deleting, modifying anything in the FTP, whether it's the directory or uploading or downloading files. And then again, lastly, with the database options, which are very popular, running a stored procedure, a SQL script, uh, modifying, updating um, a record in the database, creating tables, as well as saving a blob to a SQL server or grabbing one. We do have the registry options here, uh, not used too often, but you have the ability should you need to set values or delete values in the registry. Again, these are all custom tasks, which we'll see throughout the scheduling of um, some crystal reports. But these are default tasks. If I'm using a SQL query often, I can create some predefined ones to make it quicker when I am creating a schedule. We do have the default parameter option as well. If there are parameters that you would like to define, you can set these here and allow users who are creating schedules to um, easily select and grab those parameters for you. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hit apply here and close out of this screen. So that is all of the options, default settings that you can use when it comes to CRD. These will be saved in a configuration file local to the machine. Christian Stevens Software. Bigger data, better business.